House prices to drop 150k. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's look at this article from Yahoo Finance about housing. House prices could drop $150,000 by next year, everyone. Wow, rush, rush out, get worried. Let's be concerned. Now, yesterday we looked at, a well, cons- warnings that uh, mortgagee sales are surging, climbing up. They reached their peak. And, well, if you were asked to comment, because I compared that to the total number of housing, and if you were asked, shouldn't you be comparing that 250, that was the number, to the average national monthly house sales instead? And this is a, a pretty good point by Tkats. I don't Get real names on your, call, on your usernames, people. I can't. I'm struggling enough that it is with real names, let alone these things. Anyway. Anyway, they asked me, made a good suggestion. And, well, I did that. And we look at 2021 numbers. You're still looking at half a percent of monthly sales. So these mortgagee sales, these distressed sales, less than half a percent of the sales that occurred in a month. That's the peak. It's down from there. So there you go. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this, guys. Because even if it drops 150000 uh, you need to think how far back in time are we going? We've just had a crazy surge. It, it's not going to make much difference. Sure, there may be some people trapped in a mortgage they can't refinance because they might be in negative equity or their their LVRs don't match with their income anymore, but if they can still make, make their repayments, are they going to care? If it's your primary residence, are you going to care? So the national median home price could drop by 150 grand by the end of next year, according to new data. Recently, ANZ predicted property prices across the country could fall 20%. And we looked at that. Hang on, I've got this I've got this right here. This is ANZ's prediction, everyone. Okay, this is it, where it'll jump up, jump back down. So you've got to think, okay, we're only going back to here, still insanely expensive. I, Have you asked me if I think housing is, is uh, you know, like good as a rock or always going to go up and... I would argue it's a state religion here in Australia. And the government, both state and federal level, all their ways to help housing become more affordable, unintentionally or maybe intentionally, puts a a level of support in the market. And then you've got all this demand. You've got migration increasing. You know, 200,000 people is a significant proportion of our population. Look at the migration rates in America, guys, compared to their population. And you've got, well international students returning and still most people want to go to sydney or melbourne or brisbane so there you go i think a lot of it's to do with location too the data found sydney's median house price could drop an estimated two hundred and four thousand between july 22 and 23 taking it to 1.14 million so okay i feel sorry for the people that have lost 200 grand but 1.14 million is still not affordable housing. We're still not reaching that. And here's the thing. People are hoping, and they're sitting on the sidelines waiting for a major correction in the market to jump in. Is that a folly? Is it going to correct enough? And would the potential damage from a significant correction be so large that, well, you'll see massive intervention. In Melbourne, the median house price could fall by 128000 from July 22. That's it from July 22, when it was insane, to 836, while prices could drop more than 160000 in Brisbane and Adelaide by the end of next year. Oh, no, so all those insane unre- you know, paper gains you've gotten uh, will disappear. Now, the risk is the property bros that use equity mate to just leverage from one property to the other and ride the wave up. They're the ones that could get into a little bit of trouble if their equity falls and, you know, they may have to sell a couple of their their property portfolio or if they've got enough cash flow, they should be fine. These figures are based on CoreLogic's adjusted median values from December 21, applying ANZ's annual forecast. You can see here, what are we at Brisbane? We're 700 and... 19,000, we could drop 165,000. I mean, look at all these, these falls in, a, infla- in a, a market where we've got inflation. 
So the prices are forecast to rebound in 24. Yeah, if we get any falls, there's still going to be demand. Then you'll get FOMO. We saw it happen in the pandemic. Property was falling. FOMO, people jump back in. While steep price drops are expected between now and the end of 23, ANZ is forecasting property price rises in all capital cities in 24. However, analysis from Rate City found property prices across, across the capital cities would be substantially lower in 24 than currently. So let's look at Brisbane. So the December 24 forecast would be 755. And what are we now? What is it, the forecast? You're here at 719. So is that is that the forecast? The decrease? Doesn't, you know, okay, still. Okay, Sydney will go up to 1.2 as opposed to 1.1. 1. 1. You know, it's still going to, none of this is going to be affordable. That's the thing. Concerns over mortgage prison. And th this is the real issue where people might get trapped and can't refinance. People who don't own a decent portion of their property may find they can't refinance for several years, putting them in mortgage prison according to Rate City. This is because borrowers need to own at least 20% of their property in order to refinance. Otherwise, their new lender will hit them with costly lender's mortgage insurance, which could negate any potential savings. I think we'll see that. But that's not going to force a flood of properties to the market to see a major correction. That just means people's retail and discretionary spending is going to take a hit. Borrowers in negative equity are likely to find lenders aren't willing to take them on at all. First home borrowers who took advantage of the federal government's low deposit scheme are among the borrowers most likely to be impacted. Rate City analysis shows if someone bought a median priced house in Sydney in December 21 with a 10% deposit, they could owe the bank 8% more than the home was worth at the end of 23 if ANZ's forecasts were realized. This is despite the fact they will be paying down their debt for two years. Yeah, that's just life. That's what happens. I mean, so what? You know, <laughs> you got you got to deal with it, guys. You just got to deal with it. You're living in there. You're getting the utility of owning a home. I'm sure most people will happily put up with that for a couple of years and just keep powering through rather than having to deal with the bullshit of renting. You know, seriously, what would you rather have a few years of negative equity while you're building an asset that you own and that you can live and you have more freedom and control over than being a renter. By the end of 24, you could owe the back almost exactly, almost exactly as much as the property would be worth. I mean, yeah, that's that's what happens, guys. Uh, I've what, what did we do? We um, I had two a mortgage on a, another property, and this one, and I I mixed them all together, refinanced it all for all on this property because we had such big equity growth and this was years ago, guys, before it went insane, and just to save money. So I would consolidate it all in one loan, and then I could hit it faster. And I remember they had to get us, because I'm small business, they had to get a special person to come and do all the sums or the, the bank checks. And I'm going, guys, this is going to be more cost effective. It's going to be cheaper for me. It'll be less cost. But the normal the normal broker couldn't, ha couldn't understand it. Anyway, borrowers in Melbourne may also find themselves in a similar situation. If they had a 10% deposit when they purchased in December 21, they could owe the bank 4% more than the home was worth by the end of the year. Well, what if they had the 2% deposit thanks to government, you know, super low loans for single parents? Then they'll, they'll definitely owe them more than at the end of the year if they bought the median. You know, but how many of them bought below? Rate City Research Director Sally Tyndall said, this was a classic case of what goes up can come down. However, the drops aren't likely to come close to the huge property price gains over the last couple of years. As interest rates rise, people are finding they can borrow less because they have to pay more of their monthly sal salary to the bank in interest. Tyndall said the positive side was that falling prices might finally provide some home buyers with a window in. Would-be buyers now have to pay significantly higher interest rates on prices that will still likely be well above pre-COVID levels, she said. Yeah, I mean, how's it going to be a window in? It's just going to be more of the same. So let's let's have a talk about this. So potentially significant corrections in the housing market, and it's going to affect the first-home buyers and really the people that took advantage of the government schemes. 
Will they sell at a loss? Well, no, you'd be crazy to. If you can afford to make your repayments, why the hell would anyone take a, a loss to you know, get out of a, a bad situation? You, you'd power through. What you'll see is you'll see people tightening their belts for the first time in their lives and having to tough it out. That, that's what that's will happen. So discretionary spending will take a hit. You're seeing it, I think, in the US target, say, uh, what is it, profit or revenue fell 90%. So a lot of these people are coming over the insane lockdown highs that they had. A lot of these businesses too. So there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know your opinions down below and check out my other channels, Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International. Heiser Bim, I discuss the tools I use as an architect and Heiser Says International, I cover international news and topics. If you want to support the channel, you can via Patreon or YouTube using our referral links, buying our pocket squares or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Do you think housing will ever be affordable in Australia? People have been complaining about it for decades.